For the longest time, in order to add multiple languages over to Webflow, you needed to use third-party plugins. There were also a lot of disadvantages that came in with those third-party tools. But with the release of Webflow localization, you're able to go ahead and do that directly in Webflow and to make your website localized in just a few minutes. We had a chance to implement Webflow localization on a few of our clients. So in this video, I'll share our opinions on why we think Webflow localization is good and what are some of the disadvantages that we noticed. My name is Urosh and I'm the founder and CEO at Flow Ninja. And since 2015, we've helped more than 200 clients go ahead and go live on Webflow and generate more revenue by leveraging Webflow as a technology. The first part I want to go ahead and cover is pricing. This has been a big elephant in the room, specifically if you look at Twitter or anywhere online. So I want to compare Webflow to Weglot and Linguana and showcase how much is it actually going to cost you. If we look at the example of you having three languages, Weglot is going to be at $32, Linguana is going to be at $19, and Webflow is going to be at $36. And these are all on the monthly packages. Webflow offers huge discounts if you go ahead on the annual package, but in this case, it's not going to make a huge difference. Are you going to pay $20 or $30 in my opinion? Where the difference comes to be a little bit bigger is if you move to five languages or more. So for five languages, Linguana is going to be at $49, Weglot is going to be at $87, and Webflow is going to be at $175, again on a monthly package. And I believe that Webflow is worth the price. Why? We're going to cover in the next feature set. Webflow is more expensive, but even the platforms like Weglot sometimes can have additional hidden costs if you have more and more translated things on your website. Just because of that, I do believe that Webflow's price is justified and that if you can save few development hours every Every single month when you run the website, it's probably going to be in the end even cheaper compared to other platforms. So let's dive into the feature set. The first part is of course going to be static pages. If we go ahead and jump to Webflow, you're going to see that on the top left you have English and in our case we have Serbian. This is an actual live website you can go ahead and visit for our co-working space we're running in niche Serbia. So by just changing the language, you're able to double click whatever you want to on the website and change the copy. If you might be lazy and you don't want to translate it on your own, you can go ahead and use the styles panel, right click the body and translate everything to Serbian automatically. This was possible on all of the other platforms that I showcased, but the thing which was not was actually testing your content directly in Webflow. So right now I can go ahead and see how does my Serbian copy look on mobile? How does it look on tablet, on landscape? and even create bigger breakpoints if needed. On all of the other platforms, this was available only after you go live. So I needed to publish this landing page, a third party tool is gonna crawl it, and then it's gonna showcase the translations, and then we need to update the translations, we need to publish that, and on the live production website, we're gonna have a page which hasn't been translated properly, or we're gonna have a page which is broken. Ah oh, man! Specifically when it comes to German words, they can be pretty big. So in the case of Webflow's localization, you're gonna be able to do that directly directly inside of Webflow and you're going to be able to adjust your development style based on the language you're adding. The next thing is CMS, of course, and the translation of the CMS. If we go to our blog posts, you're able to see here that we can add blog posts in all of the languages or in some specific languages. So I've made a dummy blog posts here where I published kind of five blog posts in English and in Serbian, I can go ahead and delete some of them because I might want to publish five blog posts in English and just three in Serbian, which is possible and which hasn't been possible with any of the other tools in an easy way as far as I know. We added custom JS, we added uh, filtering and whatever in order to make this happen for one of our clients. And just because of that, I know how big of a struggle it is and I would give every penny to have a feature like this. So you can see here that I can go ahead and select this, I can delete, delete and I have just three blog posts in Serbian. Additionally, if I want to publish something just in Serbian, I'm going to be able to go ahead and create a blog post just in the Serbian language and not in the English one. Or in Spanish, German, whatever we do choose in terms of the languages, it's going to be able to be done pretty pretty easily. Images. After the CMS, we come to images. The great thing is if you have maybe some images which have text on top of them, you're going to be able to exchange the assets on different languages. So you can see here, if I just click in Serbian, I'm going to be able to replace this image just in the Serbian version. I'll also be able to go ahead and change the alt text pretty easily by just double clicking inside of Webflow. Previously, this was not possible in an easy way. So just because of that, I do think that this feature is like a little bit unique compared to other tools. Yes, you could translate URLs, but you you needed to upload them to Webflow, copy the link, copy it over, change the, change the link structure, and that 
whole process back and forth was maybe easy for me, but when it come, came to our clients who were the end users of the platform itself, it wasn't as easy for them to go ahead and change these localized assets in different languages on different platforms. So I'm really happy that right now we're able to do that directly inside of Webflow. After this, we come to URL slugs. I mean, like this was available on all the different platforms and on Webflow. You're able to go ahead and just kind of go to a page. Let's go ahead to our style guide. You're able to say like style guide or whatever you want to so you're able to translate the url slugs in an easy way as possible and you're able to translate folders cms items and everything you would imagine to translate on different languages out of the box directly in webflow sitemap I say this many times, but like this might be my second favorite or my favorite feature, just because it's gonna allow you to create automatic sitemaps in Webflow for all of your languages. I mean, for some of our clients, we have multiple projects, reverse proxy into a single one, and then we have custom ways to actually create a single sitemap out of those five sitemaps. So the whole process can become a little bit cumbersome. And by leveraging the Webflow localization, we're able to go ahead and create a single directory for our sitemap, where Google is actually gonna know that Google needs to come to a single place in order to find all of our pages and all of our multiple languages. And in the end, this will hopefully result in better rankings for you in terms of the local SEO initiatives you might have at your company. And a few of the like usual things is gonna be visitor routing. So we're gonna be able to set up if a, a person has Serbian as a default language in their browser, we can route them to Serbian automatically, or they can of course change the languages on their own with a custom kind of language switcher that Webflow is gonna allow you to add on the bottom right. And you're gonna have machine power translation, whether it's gonna be natively through Webflow, or you might wanna integrate localized or something like that or on the other side you might want to go ahead and proofread everything and just make sure that everything is written in the best way possible on every single language after the basic and advanced plans if you want to go ahead and move to enterprise this is where it's going to become a little bit more fun because we're going to be able to go ahead and manage styles differently on different locales so for example you might have a german version of the website where you want all of your fonts to be like 20 percent smaller and this is going to be possible to do with webflow and with the webflow kind of style changes you're going to be able to do individually on a specific locale but unfortunately it's available only to enterprises on top of that with the enterprise package for localization you're going to be able to change what you see on different versions of the website so you might want to hide some elements on the spanish version hide some elements on a different region etc etc so that by doing so you can manipulate what people see on different languages and create different elements which are visible on english and might not have been visible on the german version one of the downfalls we saw here is that currently you're not able to change static pages in web flows based on the locale itself this is something that hopefully is going to be fixed but currently you're not able to create an about us page just in the english version and not in the serbian one i mean like you can hide it from everywhere maybe you can even hide it from the sitemap and stuff like that but there is no processes that makes it a little bit easier to hide this page just in the serbian language as localization came out pretty recently but at the time of you watching the video this might have been updated if you used webflow localization or you're considering to switch to webflow localization Feel free to write questions down below and I'll make sure to answer every single one of them.